This is definitely the most miserable tribulation crossing realm expert in history. Trapped by a junior for three days is one thing, but now he's also getting beaten up by that junior's minion. At this point, old Meng is almost driven mad from being trapped. He's been confined by Yifeng for a full three days. Just then, Little Blood quietly approaches old Meng from behind, moving extremely fast. Old Meng is utterly astonished, sensing that the other has murderous intent. Old Meng warns her to back off, saying that he doesn't want to kill. But who is Little Blood to be threatened by him? Daring to hunt down my master even though you're only at the fourth level of tribulation crossing realm, you're really overestimating yourself. Old Meng is startled. Master, what kind of monster are you? But Little Blood ignores him, and proceeds to beat up Old Meng, making him howl in pain. Little Blood sneers disdainfully. After all, I've passed two Heavenly Dao Thunder tribulations. If I can't even handle you, my master would be angry. But my master doesn't plan to kill you. After I discipline you some more, I'll take you to meet my master. Then she proceeds to beat up Old Meng fiercely. At this moment, Little Blood feels extremely gratified, finally getting a chance to take action, the master said. I can beat you until even your mom doesn't recognize you. Then, the screams of Old Meng can be heard. Meanwhile, Huang Xiaofei is in contact with his father, learning that Old Meng came looking for them. Huang Xiaofei is puzzled, saying that he hasn't seen Old Meng at all, especially after learning from his father that Old Meng has been chasing for three days, and that Old Meng just sent out a distress call, and is now about to get killed. Huang Xiaofei is even more shocked. What's going on? On the other side, Yi Feng and Meng Tongyu are discussing a possible collaboration. Huang Xiaofei Xiaofei rushes over hurriedly. Huang Xiaofei quickly asks Yi Feng, Have you seen an old man in a gray robe these past few days? Yi Feng replies, Of course. Isn't he the enemy who's been chasing you? You guys need to learn to hide your tracks. If it weren't for me trapping him, you would have been killed by that old man. You don't need to thank me. Hearing this, Huang Xiaofei becomes frantic. Brother Yi, that's a misunderstanding. Please call back the person you sent out. The old man in the gray robe is Meng Tanyu's father, not an enemy. Yi Feng is shocked upon hearing this, letting out a big oh crap. Meng Tanyu is also confused. What's going on? Just then, a figure descends from the sky, and when the smoke clears, it's old Meng who has been beaten up. He weakly calls out for help, feeling like he's about to breathe his last. At this moment, a barely alive old Meng is stepped on once more as he lands by little blood. Master, I brought the person back. Did I do well this time? Seeing this scene, Yi Feng and the others are utterly stunned, not knowing what to say. Regaining his senses, Meng Tanyu quickly rushes towards his father, yelling, Father, are you alright? His expression is one of utter grief. Old Meng can only mumble incomprehensibly, and after after a moment, his head tilts as if he has breathed his last. This makes Meng Tanyu even more heartbroken. I never thought I'd send off my gray-haired parents so soon. Seeing this, Huang Xiaofei also feels like his head is about to explode. Yi Feng doesn't know what to say, and Little Blood looks slightly red, clearly embarrassed, as if she's done something wrong. However, Old Meng is not seriously injured, and after recuperating for a few hours, Huang Xiaofei explained the misunderstanding of this incident clearly to Old Meng. At this point, Yi Feng walks over to Old Meng, who is in a wheelchair, and sincerely apologizes apologizes to him. He says he had thought Old Meng was an enemy seeking revenge, because he had been watching Huang Xiaofei and muttering to himself. Old Meng sighs, acknowledging that he also had a part to play in the misunderstanding. He says he didn't expect that young Master Yi was actually protecting his son and the young master. At this moment, Old Xiao walks out. Old Meng, long time no see. I hope you've been well. Old Meng is startled. Boss Xia, why are you here? Old Xia says, don't call me boss anymore. I'm not involved in running the auction house. Now I'm an elder in the Star Soul Sect, just looking for a place to retire after a lifetime of hard work. Hearing this, Old Meng is surprised. The former head of a top-tier auction house is now an elder. Old Xia plays the role of mediator at this time. If your business association wants to collaborate with our Star Soul Sect, let me introduce you. Behind me is the Sect Master of Star Soul Sect, Luo Qianxue, who is also the darling daughter of the Sect Master of Star Extreme Sect, Luo Wuming. The others are core disciples of the Star Extreme Sect. You should know what they represent. The core disciples also warmly greet Old Meng and others, then go on to introduce by Tian Hong. Luo Kai, and Little Blood, who is a great demon. Meng Tongyu is speechless. All of these individuals are heavyweights. At this point, everyone in the guest room starts to make small talk, but they seem to have forgotten something. The Star Soul Sect has one more disciple. Wu Feng, who is eavesdropping outside, feels a bit heartbroken. I was the third disciple to join the sect. How come no one remembers me? Hearing old Xia's detailed introductions, old Meng is incredibly shocked. He hadn't thought that such an inconspicuous small sect would have so many big names. Their backing must be more than just the Star Extreme Sect. Just the then, a figure carrying a tremendous sword aura appears. Old Meng is startled once more. There's yet another exceptionally talented sword cultivator. Meng Tangyu and Huang Xiaofei are also astounded. Who could this person be? Is it another heavyweight or one of Yifeng's fellow disciples? However, upon seeing this golden yellow figure, Meng Tangyu and Huang Xiaofei are completely dumbfounded. It's actually a little yellow dog. They can't believe what they're seeing. Little yellow jumps into Yifeng's arms, furiously licking Yifeng's cheeks. Yifeng is also very happy, finally seeing his dog again. Old Bai and Lu 
Luokai are left feeling helpless, wondering why all the good stuff always goes to the dog. They comment that it would be great if they were not human. At this moment, Yifeng starts to feed Little Yellow again, and in just a moment, a red sword aura bursts into the sky. Yes, Little Yellow has reached a realm that many sword cultivators can only dream of. The sword heart realm, the sword embryo protoform. Old Meng starts to question his life. Even a dog has achieved so much, making them feel inferior to a dog. Wang Xiaofei secretly praises himself for his guess. Indeed, there is nothing ordinary in Brother Ye's possession. After all, Yi Feng had given him the battle holy body. Luo Qinxue is also very annoyed at this time, but she can only hold it in, telling herself not to get angry. This originally belonged to the prodigal disciple. If he wants to squander it, so be it. But if the great ancestral elder were to see this, he would definitely lose his temper. Luo Kai feels like he made the right choice coming here. He had thought that Yi Feng sharing the great demon's body was already the height of extravagance, but he never thought that Yi Feng would also possess something that can break through to the sword heart realm. At this moment, core disciple Chen Haoyu steps forward, explaining to Old Meng and others that this is just basic behavior for their junior disciple. Soon, Old Meng and the others decide it's time to leave. Luo Chinshua wanted to invite them to stay overnight, but they declined, saying they have to go back and report to the chairman that they're safe. On the way back to the association, Old Meng questions his son and the young master, asking what kind of deal they struck with Star Soul Sect. To be honest, he's still somewhat skeptical about the authenticity of the blood ginseng pill formula. He also questions their trust in Yifeng, wondering if it's solely based on the formula. Upon hearing this, Meng Tangyu decides to demonstrate, giving Huang Xiaofei a knowing look. Then Huang Xiaofei unleashes the power of the battle holy body, indicating that it's due to this that they trust Yifeng. Old Meng is once again shocked, wondering if this could be that particular physique. If Brother Yi has even this, how could the formula be fake? Meng Tangyu confirms that he's correct, and points out that the young master has only partially fused with the battle holy body, but has already undergone a massive change in his comprehension abilities. Even heavenly tier high-level cultivation techniques can be understood with just one glance. Old Meng's attention is immediately shifted. He hurriedly asks where these heavenly tier high-level techniques are. Wang Xiaofei laughs, saying he used them as toilet paper while going to the bathroom. He too indulged in a rare act of extravagance. Old Meng is infuriated, calling it an act of prodigality. He then quickly takes the two away, planning to negotiate with the chairman, believing that Yi Feng's extravagant actions must indicate a significant background. He thinks offering a mere 10 percent profit is too low. They should give at least 20 to 30 percent. Meanwhile, in Luo Chinshua's study, Yi Feng sits down and asks what the matter is. Luo Chinshua confronts him, saying she has underestimated him. In just a few days away from the sect, he's assumed multiple identities. Core disciple, honorary elder, founded his own sect, and even taken the Valley Master of 10,000 Flower Valley as his disciple. So, what should she, as his master, call him? Luo Chinshua looks at Yi Feng with disapproval. Yi Feng quickly assures her that he will not require her to call him by those titles, saying that in life and death, he is her disciple, and he will always be her disciple. Upon saying this, he suddenly bursts into tears. The scene is truly touching. Yi Feng thinks to himself that as long as he helps his master strengthen their sect, he will eventually win her over. Luo Chinshue is also moved by his words, though it's been somewhat chaotic. Yi Feng is, after all, her only direct disciple in both lifetimes. Yi Feng then starts to explain, saying the Valley Master of 10,000 Flower Valley only became his disciple because of a lost bet, and his honorary elder title was more for fun, accepted only due to the arrangements made by the five ancestral elders. Luo Chinshue says she won't delve into this matter anymore. The great ancestral elder contacted her, warning him not to squander the top-grade spiritual crystals in his possession, as they will be of great use in the future. Do you know that there's a mysterious place in the Heavenly Dao battlefield? Upon hearing this, Yi Feng immediately knows she's talking about Heavenly Dao City. Luo Chinshue is startled, asking how he knows. Yi Feng says he's already been there, but unfortunately, the Heavenly Dao token he had was only good for half a day. Luo Chinshue is flustered. She had planned to tease Yi Feng a bit, but now the tables have turned. Yi Feng then tells her about the interesting aspects of Heavenly Dao City, promising that the next time he goes to the Heavenly Dao battlefield, he will bring back more Heavenly Dao tokens, so they can both enjoy the city. He even plans to have powerful experts in the Tribulation Crossing realm serve her tea and water. Luo Chinshue is once again moved, thinking that although her disciple is quite extravagant, he is also considerate of her. She feels quite fortunate. Yi Feng, upon seeing the softer side of his beautiful master, can't help but feel his heart stir. So, master does have this beautiful aspect to her. Moments later, both of them feel incredibly awkward. Luo Chinshua tells him to leave, and that she will inform the great ancestral elder about the situation with Heavenly Dao City. After leaving, Yi Feng is deep in thought, feeling that his relationship with his master has deepened, but he can't rush things. He has to take it slow. Just then, Luo Kai silently appears behind him, giving Yi Feng a start. It's been a while, Elder Luo. What brings you here? Luo Kai whispers, saying that he's heard old Bai and old Xiao have been feeling unwell lately, so as a body 
cultivator. He offers his help, telling Yi Feng to come to him if there's anything that needs doing. As old Bai and old Xia are getting on in years, Yi Feng is speechless. So, you're here to curry favor with me? Just then, old Bai suddenly appears on the rooftop. Luo Kai, I knew you were up to no good. At the same time, old Xia also emerges from some nearby bushes, looking none too pleased. Luo Kai, you look shifty. Clearly, you're not up to anything good. Caught off guard, Luo Kai blurts. How long have you two been hiding? Both elders move behind Luo Kai. So you're saying we're not fit? Old Xia chimes in. When I was running the company single-handedly, you were still sucking on a bottle, leaving Luo Kai trembling with fear. Yi Feng tells them to knock it off. There's no heavy lifting to be done today. Instead, he promises that any future manual labor will be split between the three of them. Seeing this, Old Bai and Old Xia decide not to bother Yi Feng any longer. But they're not letting Luo Kai off the hook. They each grab an arm and drag him away. Luo Kai cries out, Yi Feng, save me. Yi Feng can only shrug. You're on your own, Elder Luo. Afterward, Yi Feng returns to his dormitory for some much needed rest, but he hears familiar voices. Oh, senior brothers and sisters, you're staying in his courtyard too? It's several core disciples who warmly greet Yi Feng. They even compliment him for reaching the peak of the foundation realm after just a few days away. As everyone is chatting, Wu Feng, who is not too far away, is watching them. He thinks to himself that he needs to make an appearance, or his senior brother might forget about him. So he walks over, greets Yi Feng, and inquires about how many minutes it took for him to break through. He even wonders if Yi Feng jumped straight from the Qi activation realm to the foundation realm. This earns him the skepticism of the core disciples. Brother Wu Feng, did you fry your brain while alchemy practicing? Even if junior brother Yi Feng is strong, it's impossible to leap across two major realms in one go. It's not just about leaping realms. Even breaking through two minor realms would be tough. After all, the foundation realm involves creating a spiritual lotus. However, Yi Feng surprises them. Finally, someone who understands me. Wu Feng, you really get me. You have no idea how agonizing it was that no one witnessed the groundbreaking scene when I broke through. If only those two bystanders hadn't died. Wu Feng is stunned, then thinks to himself that he really does understand his senior brother best. The core disciples look at Yi Feng incredulously. What do you mean, junior brother Yi Feng? Is what Wu Feng saying actually true? Are you really that formidable? The core disciples surround Yi Feng, asking him how he managed to achieve such consecutive breakthroughs, and if possible, could he teach them too? To change the subject, Yi Feng turns to Wu Feng. Weren't you the one who once consumed 2,000 clear mysterious pills? Why haven't you tried breaking through to the foundation realm yet? Speaking of this, Wu Feng is very grateful to Yi Feng. Thankfully, the clear mysterious pills also worked for him at the merging spirit realm, allowing him to attain a pure constitution. He then explains why he hasn't tried breaking through. He initially intended to attempt reaching the foundation realm, but his master said to wait until senior brother returned, since building the spiritual lotus is crucial for cultivators. Upon hearing this, Yi Feng says, I see, I don't have anything that can help you yet, so just wait for a bit. Hearing their conversation, the core disciples are filled with envy. Why couldn't we have met junior brother before reaching the foundation realm? Then we could also have a pure constitution. Suddenly, Xia Tian Tian says, we're all at the ninth level of the purple mansion realm, yet we haven't refined our lotuses to ascend to the original spirit realm. Xiao Tianming also agrees, we still have one chance at the original spirit realm. Thinking of this, they feel it's better to not rush their breakthroughs. Just then, a new system task is announced. Lead your fellow disciples to participate in the Sunlit Sex Mystic Realm Grand Competition. You must get second place. First place is not allowed. Success will reward you with spendthrift points, while failure will result in a deduction. Yi Feng is somewhat surprised. What's this all about, and why must we get second place? Although he's not sure what this grand competition involves, getting second place and not allowing his fellow disciples to get first is tricky. What if the competitors forfeit and they accidentally get pushed to first place? That would be problematic. He then asks his senior brothers and sisters if they know about the Sunlit Sex Mystic Realm Grand Competition. Chen Hao Yu looks puzzled. How do you know about this, junior brother? Du Tian Yu states that they did indeed receive an invitation from the Sunlit Sect a few days ago, but it was turned down by the Saintess after she learned about it. Hearing this, Yi Feng decides to ask his beautiful master for more information. He then heads to Luo Chen Xiu's room. He directly inquires about the matter, asking if someone from the Sunlit Sect has sent an invitation. Luo Chen Xiu confirms and says, yes, the Sunlit Sect is the only first-class sect nearby. They have sent out invitations to dozens of surrounding sects for the Mystic Realm Grand Competition. However, any sect that agrees to participate must contribute certain resources to a secret realm. Although there is a limit to the number of participants each sect can send, each gets to keep whatever resources they acquire. It seems fair, but that secret realm is under the control of the Sunlit Sect. They are already extremely familiar with it, so other sects will surely be at a disadvantage. Upon hearing this, Yi Feng says he is very interested in participating in this grand competition. However, Luo Chanshua turns down Yi Feng's request, citing the sect's financial difficulties. Just after saying this, she regrets her words. After all, standing before her is a veritable god of wealth. How could he lack resources? Luo Chinshue is suddenly struck dumb.
dumb. She completely forgot that this guy is a notorious spendthrift. Yi Feng generously says, Master, are you lacking resources? I have some that I can contribute. Luo Chen Xiu's face turns a shade of awkward red, finding herself in the unusual situation of a disciple offering to provide resources to her. Yi Feng immediately says that he can contribute 50 enlightenment pills, 59 leaf soul returning herbs, 3 gold and silkworm star shining stones, and 100 drops of great demon fairy blood. Luo Chen Xiu is stunned. Is this guy planning to squander all these assets? The total resources of other sects participating in the grand competition wouldn't even match the value of a single drop of great demon fairy blood. Yi Feng cheekily asks, is this enough? When the other sects see these resources, they will surely go crazy, won't they? Luo Chen Xiu confirms that it's more than enough, but then says, you can't contribute these to the mystic realm grand competition. Since you're willing to squander resources, I'll just confiscate them all. As for the resources for the mystic realm grand competition, she says she'll provide them. However, Yi Feng objects, stating that these items can't be contributed to the sect. Luo Chen Xiu is immediately annoyed, asking, what's your deal? Would you rather have other sects steal these items than give them to our own sect? Yi Feng explains it's not that he's unwilling, but if these items were to be confiscated by the sect, he's sure that master would treat these junky items like treasures and venerate them. That's a situation he absolutely can't allow. However, if you, master, want to use them for something like soaking your feet, I'll gladly offer them up myself. Luo Chen Xiu indeed does want to treat them like treasures, but given that this prodigal disciple is intent on squandering them, she feels she has no choice. Better for him to waste them than for outsiders to get their hands on them. She decides to let Yi Feng contribute as he wishes, following his conditions on how to squander the resources. Hearing this, Yi Feng is ecstatic. If you're willing to follow my lead, there's no issue. You know, master, you've always been frugal, but if you try squandering just once, you'll definitely get hooked. Once you start, you can't stop. Then, I'll use my status as a wealthy individual to win over your affection. Just then, a message from the system pops up. Host, weren't you planning to send these resources to the Mystic Realm Grand Competition? Yi Feng responds, what's the Mystic Realm Grand Competition compared to my precious master? The system can't argue with that logic, conceding, fair point, you make a fair point. Yi Feng then proceeds to hand over some of the resources to the Star Soul Sect, considering them confiscated. Luo Chen Xiu asks, how should we squander the Enlightenment pills? Yi Feng suggests, master, give two to each person and feed the rest to the dog. Hearing this, Luo Chen Xiu is annoyed but holds her tongue, then asks, and what about the soul returning her? Herbs. Yi Feng continues, use them for foot soaks. As usual, give two stalks to each person and use the rest for the dog's bath. Luo Chen Xiu can't hold back anymore, a powerful aura disrupting the scene. Yi Feng is taken aback, suggesting, Master, maybe we should just put these resources toward the Mystic Realm Grand Competition after all. It seems he overestimated his master's tolerance. Upon hearing this, Luo Chen Xiu goes back to being cheerful. No need, let's distribute it according to your plan. Now, what shall we do with the remaining three gold and silkworm star shining stars? Stones. Yi Feng wants to use them to forge some blades. Luo Chen Xiu is shocked. Has he turned a new leaf? Is he finally being proactive and wanting to create weapons? Just as she's about to let him forge some daggers, Yi Feng blurts out that he wants to make knives and hoes, specifically to cultivate a field of spiritual grass for the sect. Luo Chen Xiu is furious, thinking he really can't change his old habits. Her blood pressure soaring, Luo Chen Xiu then asks about the hundred drops of great demon fairy blood. How should they be handled? Yi Feng was about to suggest using them to water plants, but is startled by his master's aura. He quickly changes his tune. Let's give them to the sect as rewards for those who make significant advancements or contributions. What do you think, master? Hearing this, Luo Chen Xiu finally cools down. All right, let's do as you say. Yi Feng thinks to himself that this is master's first time squandering resources, and she's clearly not used to it yet. I'll have her spend more recklessly once she's accustomed to it. Better not provoke her today. Subsequently, Luo Chen Xiu notifies everyone to come to the main hall for a meeting. While waiting, she asks Yi Feng, you've known those two from the Chen Hai Commerce association for several days now, right? Tell me, how did you squander this time? Yi Feng says, nothing much. I just had them eat blood ginseng pills until they vomited. Luo Chen Xiu doesn't believe that's all and continues to press Yi Feng for more. After some thought, Yi Feng remembers, oh, in a heavenly tear high-level manual, I used it as toilet paper for Huang Xiaofei. Hearing this, Luo Chen Xiu feels like spitting blood but holds back. Although heavenly tear manuals are excellent, they're garbage in the upper realm. Yi Feng then recalls that he also had some battle holy body fragments and seeing that Huang Xiaofei seemed rather prodigal, he gave it to him. This sends Luo Chen Xiu's blood pressure through the roof. She can't believe there could be another battle holy body. She's seen someone with a battle holy body challenge her master before. That person wouldn't fall even with broken limbs, and got stronger as the battle went on. Even though her master was a full realm above, she still lost. So, she carefully asks Yi Feng about the details of this battle holy body. Yi Feng thinks and says, it seems you don't need to practice any techniques or martial skills. You just get stronger the more you fight and the more severe the injuries, the more
more powerful you become. Hearing this, Luo Chanshua can't hold back anymore and spits up old blood, so it really is a battle holy body. But since it's already given to Huang Xiaofei, there's nothing I can do. You should just befriend him. The battle holy body is not as simple as you think, and its potential is beyond measure. However, Yi Feng looks annoyed. Befriend him? I'd rather stay away from that kid. He keeps talking about diligently cultivating to create the top commerce association and becoming a weapon in my hands. So, master, don't you think he's a little off? At this point, Luo Chanshua is just numb. Did this disciple get his head caught in a door or something? Just then, Old Bai arrives with the others. They gather in front of the Grand Hall with puzzled looks. Old Bai asks Luo Chinchua, Sect leader, why have you suddenly summoned us? Is something wrong? Luo Chinchua looks frustrated. No, it's just Yi Feng here. She was about to let Yi Feng announce the extravagances when Yi Feng decisively slips away. Master, I have to go to the bathroom. The rest is up to you. Luo Chinchua is dumbfounded. She's never been wasteful. Yi Feng knows this, but believes that only when Master personally experiences it, will she understand how gratifying it is to be wasteful. At this point, Luo Chinchua is frozen. She still thinks that such wasteful acts are merely disgraceful. If it weren't for the fact that Yi Feng is her direct disciple, she would have taught him a lesson long ago. Her face then turns red with embarrassment as she officially begins the announcement. The reason I've gathered everyone here today is for one thing, to be wasteful. Upon hearing this, everyone is incredulous. Sect leader, you're actually going to be wasteful too. Even the dog barks twice, as if saying, sect leader, you're awesome. Seeing the dog, Luo Chinchua suddenly gets a jolt of inspiration. That's right, if Yi Feng can be wasteful even on a dog, why should I worry? Besides, Yi Feng will foot the bill in the end. With that, she begins to tap into her hidden nature, taking out all the resources, indicating these were all contributions from Yi Feng. Seeing this, everyone cheers in unison, showering praises on the sect leader. Then Luo Chinchua begins to distribute the resources, enlightenment pills for everyone, two each, and two nine-leaf soul-returning herbs each. At this point, core disciple Du Tianyu voices a question. Doesn't that leave 28 of each remaining? How will those be allocated? Luo Chinchua looks frustrated. How else? They're all for the dog, of course. The crowd is dumbfounded. They're even less important than a dog. Finally, Luo Chinchua also takes out the great demon fairy blood. This won't be wasted. You can earn it through hard cultivation or making great contributions. Any objections? Luo Kai is the first to agree. Absolutely no objections. Sect leader is wise. His primary reason for being here is for the great demon fairy blood, and he's pleased there's a way to acquire it so soon. If there are no objections, then this meeting is adjourned, says Luo Chinchua, handing the resources to Old Bai for distribution. Everyone is very satisfied with this meeting, some even wondering about year-end bonuses. Luo Chinchua then stares at the golden silkworm star shining stone, wondering how to craft it. She's never dealt with this before. Suddenly, she thinks of an acquaintance who could help. Inside Purple Phoenix City, a young girl is in the midst of crafting. Though she looks frail, she is indeed a blacksmith. She is Chu Xiao Xiao, Luo Chinchua's acquaintance and a freelance cultivator. At this moment, Luo Chinchua arrives. Chu Xiao Xiao looks up, surprised. Sect leader Luo, what brings you here? Luo Chinchua states that she has come to ask for some crafting help for her sect. Chu Xiao Xiao, however, immediately reaches out to pinch her cheek. Long time no see, let me feel you. Ah, Luo Chinchua, you really need to work on your icy personality. Apart from my father and me, who's your close friend? Who else even likes you? Feeling proud, Luo Chinchua replies, my direct disciple can tolerate my personality. This immediately piques Chu Xiao Xiao's interest in gossip. Direct disciple? Male or female? How old? What are their measurements? Last time you were with that Wu Feng, turns out he isn't your top disciple. You've been hiding this direct disciple from me, haven't you? Learning to keep a hidden gem. Ha, huh? pouting. Luo Chinchua retorts. Well, you never asked. Enough about him. He's just a wastrel. Do you have time to help me craft some kitchen knives and hose? Chu Xiao Xiao, though eager to hear more gossip, focuses on the task at hand. Knives and hose are minor. They can wait a few days. My grandfather is currently preparing to craft an extraordinary weapon, so we're quite busy. Just then, a figure bursts forth. We have time. It's Chu Xiao Xiao's grandfather, Chu Hongshan. That weapon I'm working on can wait. Help Luo Chinchua with her knives and hose first. Then he turns to Luo Chinchua, making small talk. How are those five old codgers? Are they doing well? Luo Chinchua politely responds that the five ancestral elders are in good health. Chu Hongshan then instructs Chu Xiao Xiao to go ahead and craft those mundane items for Luo Chinchua. Anyway, it won't take much time. However, Luo Chinchua states that it's not just about crafting ironware. She has a small additional request. No problem. Go ahead, says Chu Hongshan with a jovial smile. Luo Chinchua then takes out the golden silkworm star shining stone. I need Chu Xiao Xiao to help me infuse these spiritual ores into the ironware. Upon seeing the golden silkworm star shining stone, both grandfather and granddaughter are stunned, their eyes widening in surprise. Is this from those five old codgers in your family? Chu Hongshan asks, puzzled. Chu Xiao Xiao is downright angry. You wastrel. You actually want to infuse golden silkworm star shining stones into ironware? Don't tell me you plan to use these exquisitely crafted
handcrafted items for mundane tasks like slaughtering chickens and ducks in the sex kitchen or using the hose for tilling a spiritual grass garden, keeping a stern face. Luo Chenshua replies, yes, that's exactly it. Although inside, she's chuckling. She finds it amusing how people look incredulous and it gives her great joy. Is this the joy of wasteful spending? Frustrated, Chu Hongshan turns away and vents his anger by stomping on the ground. You're really killing me here. Meanwhile, on the other side of Purple Phoenix City, Yi Fong is strolling around with little blood. I never thought the city would have such tasty grilled skewers. I know lots of fun places. I can take you there next time. Just then, they are startled by a massive explosion. Little blood quickly shields Yi Fong from the blast's impact. What just happened? Yi Fong asks, puzzled. To find out what's going on, Yi Fong decides to head towards the direction of the explosion. The two quickly make their way, one running and the other flying, and soon arrive at Chu Hongshan's location. Seeing Chu Hongshan wielding a large knife and glaring at his beautiful master, Yi Fong initially thinks his master is in danger. However, Chu Hongshan is just furious about the wasteful use of the gold and silkworm star shining stone. He initially thinks it was the five old codgers who had given Luo Qianxiu the stones for her wasteful plan, and is intent on confronting them at the Star Extreme Sect. Do you know how rare these gold and silkworm star shining stones are? Even in the Heavenly Dao battlefield, there are only a few. People have shed rivers of blood to obtain them, and you want to use them in ironware? I've never seen such wastefulness in all my years. Chu Hongshan exclaims, getting ready to leave to confront the five elders. Luo Qianxiu quickly starts explaining, this has nothing to do with the five ancestral elders. An honorary elder gave me the gold and silkworm star shining stones. Who is this honorary elder and where is he? Chu Hongshan presses. Just then, Yi Feng and Little Blood burst onto the scene, exuding a powerful aura. An angry Yi Feng approaches, who dares to bully my master? Chu Hongshan looks bewildered, and who are you? Yi Feng rushes to Luo Qianxiu's side. Fear not, master, your disciple has come to rescue you. I am Yi Feng, the direct disciple of Star Soul Sect. Then he turns to Luo Qianxiu. Master, can you please make my life a bit easier? It's good that I was wandering around here. Otherwise, what would I do if something happened to you? Upon hearing this, Luo Qianxiu blushes and feels a bit sweet inside. Though Yi Feng might be extravagant, he really does take care of her. Just as she is about to clarify the situation, Yi Feng interrupts her and instructs Little Blood to escort her away. I don't want Master to see blood, he says. Thus, Luo Qianxiu, without having a chance to explain, is whisked away by Little Blood. The scene is now left with just Chu Hongshan, Chu Xiao Xiao, and Yi Feng in a standoff. How dare you, you old geezer, try to steal from my master and even think about harming her. Who the hell gave you the courage? Chu Xiao Xiao is furious. How dare you insult my grandfather like that? She's about to make her move, but Chu Hongshan stops her. To be honest, he quite likes this guy. Chu Xiao Xiao doesn't understand. He insulted you, and you're still protecting him? Chu Hongshan replies, if you had a disciple who was as dedicated to protecting you, I would be very happy. At this moment, Little Blood returns to Yi Feng's side, indicating that she has taken the sect leader to a safe location and isolated the area with a barrier. Yi Feng praises her for doing a good job. Chu Hongshan then speaks, I admit your magical beast is strong, but have you ever considered what you would do if I were stronger than it? Yi Feng says, would you like to bet? Chu Hongshan asks, bet on what? I bet you won't be able to hurt me, even if you attack with all your might. Chu Hongshan chuckles and then leaps into the air, his fist charged with tremendous power. Let's see how you handle my full strength. The next moment, there's a thunderous roar across the field. However, his punch doesn't land on Yi Feng, but is blocked by a single finger instead. Moments later, a rather skinny figure appears behind Yi Feng, tearing through the space. He's a new member of the Divine Tycoon's Guard. Smiling, he says, finally, it's my turn to come out. With just a slight flick, the new Divine Tycoon's Guard member sends Chu Hongshan flying through the air. At this point, a new character appears in front of them, a man with only one arm. My lord, shall I annihilate this entire city? The one-armed man asks. Yi Feng is speechless. Are you here to protect me or destroy the city? The one-armed man then erupts with a terrifying aura. So you're the ones who wish to harm my lord? Don't worry, I won't kill you outright. I'll first slice the flesh off your bodies, creating perfect skeletons with only the head intact. Then, I'll make you eat the flesh of your kin piece by piece. These words make Chu Hongshan and Chu Xiao Xiao shudder in fear. Chu Xiao Xiao hurriedly clarifies, we're not enemies. I'm your master's best friend, and he's my grandfather. We haven't harmed your master. If you don't believe us, you can go ask her. Upon hearing this, Yi Feng is stunned. He sends little blood to inquire from his master whether Chu Xiao Xiao's words are true, but specifically instructs that his master should not be brought back as he doesn't want to frighten her. A few minutes later, Little Blood returns with a voice recording stone, indicating that indeed, his master had referred to Chu Hongshan as Grandpa Chu. The one-armed man says, misunderstanding or not, he dared to raise his hand against you, my lord, and for that, he must die. Yi Feng looks at this intensely murderous guard member. What exactly are you trying to do? Forgetting his place, the one-armed man suggests that Yi Feng is too kind. He is met with a stern warning from Yi Feng. Are you trying to tell me what to do? Yi Feng then employs the system's powers to suppress the one-armed man. He 
discreetly queries the system about what to do if a member of the Divine Tycoon's guard steps out of line. The system's response is unequivocal. No mercy. Sensing this, the suppression from the system intensifies. The one-armed man realizes the deadly intent of his master and begs, Please, my lord, don't suppress me any further. I won't dare to do it again. Yi Feng coldly speaks. I'll give you one chance to live. Come with me. He takes the one-armed man into the blacksmith's shop and asks him to explain the specifics about the Divine Tycoon's guard. The one-armed man respectfully states that including him, there are currently ten official members of the Divine Tycoon's Guard. To become a member, one must go through rigorous selection processes with various assessments. Even after becoming a member, there are periodic reviews, and failing these assessments means expulsion. The sole duty of a member is to protect Yi Feng, even at the cost of their own lives. They would never betray their master. After understanding the situation, Yi Feng spares the one-armed man, instructing him to reflect on his actions. He warns that any future insubordination will result in his immediate death. Trembling, the one-armed man expresses gratitude for Yi Feng's mercy before returning to the Divine Tycoon's Guard. Yi Feng then attempts to inquire from the system about the true nature of the Divine Tycoon's Guard, but is met with a refusal. The system states that it can't explain the situation for now. Nevertheless, Yi Feng has garnered some understanding. It appears that not all members of the Divine Tycoon's Guard are as straightforward as the Golden Armored Strongman. Some are bloodthirsty like the one he encountered today. Yi Feng finds this diversity intriguing and speculates that the other yet unseen members may have their unique quirks as well. Yi Feng then exits and apologizes to Chu Hongshan and Chu Xiao Xiao, stating that the previous events were all misunderstandings. To make amends and request their silence about the Divine Tycoon's Guard, he offers them five pieces of gold and silkworm star shining stones as compensation. Puzzled, Chu Xiao Xiao asks, Who exactly are you? Why are you getting close to Luo Qian Xue? If you don't explain, I will tell her. Chu Xiao Xiao threatens. Before she can say more, Chu Hongshan covers her mouth and assures Yi Feng they will keep the secret. Relieved, Yi Feng signals for little blood to bring in Master Luo Qian Xue. Why did you stop me? Grandpa, Chu Xiao Xiao asks. Puzzled, Chu Hongshan advises her to worry less. This guy won't harm Luo Qian Xue. Let's mind our own business and go make some knives and hose. Resigned, Chu Xiao Xiao agrees, but still worries about Luo Qian Xue. She decides she will keep an eye on Yi Feng when they visit Luo Qian Xue's sect, vowing that Yi Feng won't harm Luo Qian Xue in any way. At that moment, Luo Qian Xue walks over, puzzled. What were you all doing? It's a misunderstanding. All a misunderstanding, Yi Feng says, blaming Luo little blood for the confusion. She said you were in danger, master, so I came, not daring to contradict. Little blood takes the blame silently. Yi Feng quickly takes his leave with little blood before Luo Qian Xue can say more. Once Yi Feng is gone, Chu Hongshan approaches Luo Qian Xue. Your disciple is quite something, he says. Returning to a previous topic, you said earlier that the golden silkworm star shining stone was given by an honorary elder, but where does star extreme sect have an honorary elder? Caught in an awkward position, Luo Qian Xue doesn't know how to explain. Eventually, she admits, the so-called honorary elder is actually my direct disciple. The golden silkworm star shining stone was also given by him. Chu Hongshan is confused. What's so special about Yi Feng that those five old guys would do something so ridiculous? Chu Xiao Xiao is also baffled. Doesn't that mean you have to call Yi Feng Elder Yi? How did he manage to do this? Luo Qian Xue explains. Because he is rich. Yi Feng contributed 100 million top grade spiritual crystals, allowing star extreme sect to spend freely. Hearing this, Chu Hongshan nearly chokes, but soon nods understanding. Ah, I see. 100 million top grade spirit stones is indeed quite a sum. Seems like I misunderstood. Chu Xiao Xiao interrupts. It's not spirit stones. It's 100 million top grade spiritual crystals. Chu Hongshan feels dizzy. Could you not speak? Can't you let me face a less harsh reality? Just then, an idea occurs to Chu Hongshan, and he tries to curry favor with Luo Qianxue. I treat you as if you were my own granddaughter. Why don't Chu Xiao Xiao and I join your sect? Luo Qianxue is speechless. Not this again. My star soul sect already has more elders than disciples. Disciples. Am I running a retirement home? Seeing Luo Qian Xue hesitating, Chu Hongshan thinks of how to persuade her. Look, your sect is newly established, and you don't have many powerful figures. I am a ninth grade refining master, and my connections over the years might be of some use. Luo Qian Xue is indeed tempted. After all, a top tier refining master with connections is something no sect would refuse. Seeing this, Luo Qian Xue decides not to overthink it. Well, Grandpa Chu, refining in the sect will rely on you guys from now on. Having one more elder doesn't really matter. Chu Hong Hongshan chuckles mischievously. So, it's a yes then? Chu Xiao Xiao feels a bit confused throughout the process. Did I just get bundled and sold? Meanwhile, in Earth Sealed City, the top warriors of Mirror Moon Manor have been mobilized. The bystanders are incredibly surprised, wondering who could have provoked Mirror Moon Manor. Rumor has it that its master, Zhang Shufeng, is a formidable figure who has crossed the first tribulation. It turns out they are seeking revenge for Zhang Hang, a young prodigal son killed by a member of Divine Tycoon's Guard. Zhang Shufeng, being Zhang Hang's father, is leading a group of 
experts from the manor tracking Yi Feng's marker. At this moment, Yi Feng and Little Blood are wandering around Purple Phoenix City, feeling restless without an opportunity to splurge. Little Blood is pondering, where can we spend a lot of money? Suddenly, she remembers something and suggests, there's a marketplace in the northern part of the city. Maybe we can find something interesting there. Yi Feng's eyes sparkle at the suggestion. Why didn't you mention this earlier? Lead the way. Soon they arrive at the marketplace in the northern district. As they enter, they hear countless merchants hawking their goods. Many of the items are from the Heavenly Dao battlefield, and they range from martial arts techniques to all kinds of artifacts. There are even brothels. It's a place where you can find almost anything. However, Yi Feng finds the excessive enthusiasm of the people a bit uncomfortable. As they wander around, Yi Feng suddenly receives a system alert, informing him of the presence of a Heavenly Dao token. He is directed to buy an old token that contains the Heavenly Dao token. Yi Feng quickly starts searching. Where's the Heavenly Dao token? This is extremely important to me. Soon after, he spots a worn-out token. The vendor, a guy named Li Xiaoming, secretly labels Yi Feng as a sucker for showing interest in a shabby token. Li Xiaoming enthusiastically starts to pitch the token to Yi Feng, describing it as incredibly valuable. He even claims that he almost died on the Heavenly Dao battlefield to obtain it. Enough with the nonsense. Just tell me how much it costs. Yi Feng interrupts, caught off guard by Yi Feng's straightforwardness. Li Xiaoming quickly quotes a price of 3 million low-grade spirit stones. But as soon as he says it, he wonders if he's asked for too much. After all, the token's market price is really only worth about 50, shipping included. To Li Xiaoming's surprise, Yi Feng doesn't even haggle. He simply places a ring containing 3 million low-grade spirit stones into Li Xiaoming's hand, saying, no need to negotiate, let's go with the 3 million price. Li Xiaoming is stunned. Who buys something without even haggling over the price? Could it be that the token actually has some big secret? Wanting to know the truth, Li Xiaoming asks, can you tell me what the token is actually worth? I want to know how much I've lost out on. Yi Feng responds, the value of this token depends on the individual. For me, it's extremely important. So even if it costs 3 million top grade spirit stones, I would still buy it. Upon hearing this, Li Xiaoming is utterly flabbergasted. 3 million top grade spirit stones? Did I just miss out big time? Thinking this, he becomes anxious and decides he can't let them go so easily. That's 3 million top grade spirit stones we're talking about. Thinks Li Xiaoming, feeling like he's suffered a terrible loss. A strong killing intent erupts from him. Little Blood senses it and informs Yi Feng. That vendor from earlier seems to be targeting us. Yi Feng is somewhat surprised. He actually dares to make a move. Then, in a cheerful mood, he finds a tavern and sits down, waiting for Li Xiaoming to attempt an ambush. Little Blood is speechless. Even though that vendor is weak, what's going on with my master? Why is he so happy about being targeted? Meanwhile, Li Xiaoming finds an accomplice, tells him about Yi Feng, and suggests that the token might be worth more than 3 million top grade spirit stones. He feels it's very valuable and can be sold for a high price. Plus, Yi Feng must have a lot of money on him. A rogue cultivator named Tiger Boss agrees to help, but warns Li Xiaoming that if they don't gain anything from this, he will turn against him. The two then head to the tavern where Yi Feng is staying. As they approach Yi Feng's room, they hear Little Blood's voice saying, Master, you can't do this, it's too much. Upon hearing this, the two men start imagining inappropriate scenes. Inside the room, Yi Feng is arranging 2,000 low-grade spiritual crystals. Little Blood comments, isn't this too much? Giving robbers 2,000 spiritual crystals is like giving them 200,000 top-grade spirit stones. They'll make a fortune. Yi Feng replies, who said anything about letting them leave alive? Keep a close watch. As soon as they pick up these spiritual crystals, you'll take them out. Remember, only act once they've taken all these spiritual crystals. This is a momentous occasion. Give them hope and then destroy everything they have. Little Blood makes a face. What kind of manipulative behavior is this? Just then, Tiger Boss and Li Xiaoming kick the door open. Yi Feng, who has been waiting, greets them with a smile and offers the low-grade spiritual crystals. Since you're willing to rob me, it means you value me. I hope you won't mind these 2,000 low-grade spiritual crystals. Tiger Boss and Li Xiaoming are stunned. What is this? Although spiritual crystals seem valuable, they're only worth 200,000 top-grade spirit stones. We came for 3 million top-grade spirit stones. Annoyed, Yi Feng responds, so you're saying it's not enough? Li Xiaoming is infuriated. Of course, didn't you say you wouldn't hesitate to pay 3 million top-grade spirit stones? Why are you offering just these few spiritual crystals? Ignoring them, Yi Feng turns to his system interface. Look at this. Even robbers are looking down on me, the big spender. Tiger Boss and Li Xiaoming then demand, hand over the 3 million top-grade spirit stones, and we'll spare your lives. Yi Feng tells them to shut up, clearly irritated. Before he can elaborate, the Divine Tycoon's guard acts. The golden armored strongman's large hand grips both of their heads and crushes them in an instant. The golden armored strongman appears behind him and snorts, you pathetic losers are not even worthy of robbing my master. Yi Feng is stunned. Why did the Divine Tycoon's guard appear before I was even in danger? The system explains, it's the first time the big spender has been robbed. Uncommon. These kinds of people don't deserve to be 
part of your extravagant history. Yi Feng is speechless. So, it's my fault that I was robbed by someone unworthy? Feeling humiliated, Yi Feng is approached by little blood. What about these spiritual crystals? They haven't been taken yet. Just then, the system compensates Yi Feng with 100,000 spendthrift points, 109 stage thousand feather sword array flags, and one nine dragons burning sky cauldron. The sword array can collect spiritual energy within its range to form thousands of feather-like swords that autonomously attack any living beings within the formation. The nine dragons burning sky cauldron contains the souls of nine demonic dragons and can refine countless spiritual grass, burn the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, and produce supreme divine pills. Seeing these many rewards from the system, Yi Feng instantly cheers up. Looks like this damn system still has some conscience. He then returns to the star soul sect. As he enters, he hears old Bai and others talking. Where are you tired from? For so many years, the intensity of the training has been the same. Think about whether it's your own problem. Are you not practicing well? Are you not putting in enough effort? He sees Luo Kai and two others sitting there, instructing the disciples in training. Yi Feng, watching secretly, is completely puzzled. What's going on here? He notices that the disciples have been trained to the point of exhaustion. As soon as they see Yi Feng has returned, the core disciples and Len Wufeng start complaining, you're finally back. Please save us. The three elders have gone crazy. The core disciples also swarm him. Junior brother, you've got to help us. If you don't help us soon, we're going to die. Yi Feng is left bewildered and at a loss for what to do. First, let go of me, Yi Feng says, trying to free himself. At the same time, the three elders also come over, their eyes twinkling. Yi Feng, you're finally back. Old by chuckles. Yi Feng, now that you're back, shall we arrange some training for you? Yi Feng feels overwhelmed. Stay away. I don't want to train. However, the next moment leaves him bewildered. Old Bai and Old Xia start serving him tea and giving him massages, acting completely like sycophants. Luo Kai, still not getting the situation, asks, weren't you planning to have Yi Feng join the training? The two elders laugh and say, you're still too naive. This guy is a god of wealth. How could we make him suffer? And you still want to take credit? Go play in the mud. Feeling played, Luo Kai says, so that's how you want to play, huh? He then disregards everything and picks Yi Feng up. The core disciples rarely praise Luo Kai and think he's being fair, intending to also have Yi Feng start training. However, after lifting Yi Feng into the air, Luo Kai starts using his Vidra palm to blast the ground below. A moment later, Luo Kai says to Yi Feng, here you go. Turns out, he's also eager to win Yi Feng's favor. Disliking the simple mound of dirt, he turns it into a sparkling golden chair, saying, only this is fitting for a spendthrift tycoon like you. Yi Feng is very pleased with this. Elder Luo, you're quite considerate. Now, it's the core disciples turn to be stunned. The core disciples look at Luo Kai with disdain. So this is all you amount to, Elder Luo? Not being polite to them anymore, Luo Kai orders, go intensify your training now. Upon hearing intensify training, Yi Feng remembers a certain reward, the hundred thousand feather sword array flags. He asks the system if their power can be adjusted. The system confirms it can, with a duration of ten hours. However, for non-host usage, others would need to mark the flags with their blood to control their power. Yi Feng is elated. If it can be adjusted, then it's perfect, he says, confusing everyone. What's going on? Yi Feng takes out the flags. Elders, it seems your training methods for our brothers aren't very effective. Why don't we use these ninth rank flags to train them? Their power can be adjusted. The core disciples are speechless. Junior brother, how could you do this to us? It's one thing not to save us, but now you're adding insult to injury? Even Luo Kai thinks this is a bit too much. We're just training them. It's not like we're trying to kill them. Dragging his injured body, Yi Feng explains, Elder Luo, you're thinking too small. With a tone that implies he's considering the well-being of his senior brothers, Yi Feng continues, as long as it makes them stronger, what's a little suffering? It breaks my heart to see them suffer too. Luo Kai is somewhat speechless. Yi Feng, you're laying it on a bit thick, aren't you? Have some shame. Fine, it's just a flag. Let them suffer a bit. The core disciples feel like crying. Junior brother, are you trying to kill us? The core disciples are distressed, but take some comfort in the fact that there's only one flag. However, Yi Feng awkwardly pulls out more flags, explaining that one flag can only last for 10 hours, so he prepared more. Seeing this, the core disciples feel like spitting blood and immediately seek help from Luo Wuming, thinking they'll be done for if he doesn't intervene. Just as Chen Haoyu is about to explain the situation, Yi Feng stops him and quietly grants him a privilege to supervise others, under the condition that he won't tell their master. Chen Haoyu immediately hangs up the communicator and declares righteously, as the senior brother, it's my duty to guide junior brothers and sisters in this small matter. Meanwhile, in Star Extreme Sect, Luo Wuming is quite confused. What's the situation with this kid? First, he says he wants me to pick them up, and now he's hung up. Should I go or not? At this point, the great ancestral elder appears and asks what's going on. Luo Wuming explains that the core disciples want to come back. At this moment, the great ancestral elder and others are dressed like beggars, each holding a broken bowl, confusing Luo Wuming even more. What's going on with you all? Seizing the opportunity, the great ancestral elder says, my old friend by gang has come to visit and hasn't met Yi Feng yet. So, I thought, while the core disciples 
vehicles are occupied. I take my old friend to meet Yifong. You all don't mind, do you? My gang looks confused. When did I say I wanted to meet this Yifong? The other ancestral elders are furious. You sly old fox. So that's why you invited my gang and wouldn't let him leave. Just waiting for an excuse to go see Yifong. You're shameless. And so, the great ancestral elder gains the opportunity to leave the sect. Traveling at a speed of 500 meters per 0.5 seconds, the great ancestral elder and old by rush to their destination. However, old by starts to feel carsick. The great ancestral elder stops to let him recover, and old by immediately throws up. Feeling a bit embarrassed, the great ancestral elder apologizes. Sorry, sorry, I flew too fast. Old by is puzzled. Even if you're in a hurry to get to Star Soul Sack, why are you dressed like a beggar? The great ancestral elder retorts. What do you know? This isn't beggar attire. It's my winning outfit. He then asks old by about the mind calming incense and its effects. Old by's eyes light up. This stuff is excellent. Why don't you give me a few more? The great ancestral elder explains that he got the mind calming incense by begging for me phone while wearing this winning outfit. Now do you question my choice of attire? Hearing this, old by goes crazy. Why didn't you say so earlier? Do you have more of these winning outfits? Get me one. And so, the two embark on a journey to secure more winning outfits. Meanwhile, back at the star soul sect, the core disciples are suffering under the sword array. Thanks to the special privilege Yifong granted him, Chen Haoyu doesn't have to train with the rest, but instead supervises them. As soon as the array's energy is depleted, he adds more flags. Wu Feng is also trying to stick close to Yifong. Senior brother, you're so good to me. Yifong tells him not to get the wrong idea. He brought him over to ask him something, and once he's got his answer, Wu Feng will have to go back to training. Wu Feng becomes distressed. Senior brother, you're not just asking me about alchemy, are you? Don't you love me anymore? Yifong playfully looks at him. You guessed it. That's exactly why I called you over. It's about alchemy, Yi Feng confirms. Before Wu Feng can even answer, old Xia kicks him away. You should go back to the killing array for training with our ninth grade alchemist here. Any question you have can be answered. Yi Feng looks at old Xia reluctantly. Then I'll have to trouble you. He then brings out the nine dragons burning sky cauldron and shares its specifications. This cauldron can refine thousands of spiritual grasses, burn spiritual energy between heaven and earth, and produce supreme divine pills. Upon hearing this grandiose description, old Xia is stunned. He can't believe that the cauldron is as amazing as Yi Feng claims. He begins to mock Yi Feng to refine thousands of spiritual grasses. It must at least be at the heavenly tier. And there are only five heavenly tier furnace cauldrons in the entire mysterious heaven continent. I struggled a lot to even get an earth tier furnace cauldron. Don't try to fool me. As for burning spiritual energy between heaven and earth, to achieve that, the cauldron must have a cauldron spirit, which I've never heard of. And as for producing divine pills, that's just a legend in mysterious heaven continent. Yi Feng is full of confidence. Hearing you say this, old Xia, only makes me more convinced that this furnace cauldron surpasses the heavenly tier. Watch carefully. He then releases the nine dragon souls, and the entire sky turns into a sea of fire. Luo Chanshua, not far away, is incredibly shocked. Dragon souls? How could they appear in this lower world? After a moment, Yi Feng retracts the dragon souls, and both of them look at the furnace cauldron in silence. Yi Feng, having tested the nine dragons burning sky cauldron, is extremely excited. This furnace cauldron is too powerful. I feel like I could use it for barbecues in the future. Old Xia is flustered. I knew it. Bringing out this furnace cauldron could only mean you're up to something wasteful. Just then, Luo Chanshua rushes over, blurting out, Yi Feng, I knew it was you. She then asks if this is the cauldron that just released the cauldron spirit. Yi Feng confirms and asks if she wants to try it. Luo Chanshua is indeed interested, but the furnace cauldron seems to have no reaction to her. Did you claim it by shedding blood into it? She asks. Yi Feng curiously responds, I don't think so, but it nearly drained all my spiritual energy earlier. Luo Chanshua is surprised. That means you've been approved by the cauldron spirit. You should know, the power you wielded with those nine dragon souls could have destroyed the star soul sect dozens of times over. Even someone who has survived nine heavenly Dao thunder tribulations could be slain by you with this furnace cauldron. At this moment, old Xia sidles up to Luo Chenshua, startling her. He suggests that she persuade Yi Feng not to be so wasteful. He actually wants to use this furnace cauldron for barbecuing. Its demonic dragon cauldron spirit can burn through space itself, and yet he wants to use it for grilling meat. Hearing this, Luo Chanshua couldn't help but rub her forehead in exasperation. She asks Yi Feng if he understands how powerful this furnace cauldron is. With this, you could walk sideways in this world. Yi Feng isn't concerned. People are like iron and food is like steel. Miss a meal and you'll starve. I'm not interested in walking sideways. Barbecuing sounds much better. Unwilling to give up, Luo Chanshua continues to persuade him. This furnace cauldron is a supreme treasure. It can refine any pill and kill any enemy in this lower world. If used properly, the possibilities are endless. Yi Feng maintains that barbecuing is the best use for it. Switching topics, Yi Feng asks, Master, what would you like to eat tonight? How about we use this furnace cauldron for a barbecue? Luo Chenshua gets furious, draws her long sword, and is about to strike Yi Feng. Old Xia hurriedly steps in to 
stop her. Sect leader, you can't. He's still your direct disciple after all. Luo Chenshua demands to be let go, intent on cutting down this rebellious disciple. Seeing the situation, Yi Feng quickly makes his exit. Master, old Xia, you two chat. I won't disturb you. Being a disciple is hard work, always getting hit and scolded by the master. I wonder if Li Fei has returned to the sect. Kind of miss him. Meanwhile, in the dark flame sect within the heaven fire realm, Li Fei is trembling as he lies on the ground. Because he had gone to the heavenly Dao battlefield without permission, he's being punished by his master, Sun Tian Yu, who is also the sect leader of Dark Flame Sect. While Li Fei continues to tremble, Sun Tian Yu walks over, grabs him by the head, and lifts him up, warning, from today, you are not allowed to leave the sect until you've broken through to the foundation realm. At this moment, the great ancestral elder of the Dark Flame Sect, Wang Qingshan, appears, muttering to himself, who is this sword Dao friend visiting? When he sees Li Fei, he is shocked. Sun Tian Yu is puzzled. What sword Dao friend? There's no one visiting. Wang Qingshan senses the sword intent within Li Fei. Wang Qingshan asks him to explain himself. Li Fei really doesn't want to talk, but seeing the situation, both Sun Tian Yu and Wang Qingshan start beating him up. You dare to hide things? Speak up. What's going on? I thought you hated sword cultivators. Li Fei pleads for them to stop hitting him and begins to explain. He says that he met a spendthrift in the Heavenly Dao battlefield who had a fragment of death sword intent. When this person learned that he didn't like sword cultivators, he forcefully gave the death sword intent fragment to him. Just like that, during a quick trip to the restroom, I acquired death sword intent. So, great ancestral elder, please don't blame me. I didn't want this. Upon hearing this, Wang Qingshan's face darkens. I spent 60 years cultivating sky flame sword intent, and you gained death sword intent in a few minutes? Sun Tian Yu then gives Li Fei a warning look. So, what do you plan to do now? With his mindset focused on slacking off, Li Fei naturally doesn't want to cultivate strenuously. He says that he will avoid all things related to the sword in the future, and over time, he will forget about the sword intent. Wang Qingshan is furious. You want to forget the sword intent? He then proceeds to beat up Li Fei again and declares that he will personally guide him in the way of the sword. Li Fei is freaked out and quickly turns to Sun Tian Yu for help, who is more than happy to have the great ancestral elder educate his good-for-nothing disciple. Meanwhile, back at Star Soul Sect, a new day dawns. Yi Feng's extravagant acquisitions for today are updated. Ten heavenly tear furnace cauldrons. Yi Feng is speechless. How exactly am I supposed to go broke with these alchemy furnaces? He recalls that old Xia had mentioned that these heavenly tear furnace cauldrons are highly sought after across the entire mysterious heaven continent. Just then, the door to Yi Feng's room gets kicked open. It's Luo Chenshua, and she looks frantic as if something has happened. Yi Feng, who has just woken up, is completely bewildered. Master, what's going on? Couldn't you have just knocked? Luo Chenshua is here to scold Yi Feng. How could you just casually leave the Nine Dragons Burning Sky Cauldron in the yard? Yi Feng thought it was something serious and responds, Master, it's just an old alchemy furnace. No need to make a big fuss. Do you want me to enshrine it or something? Luo Chenshua's face turns red. She was actually thinking along those lines. What's wrong with venerating such a supreme treasure? Yi Feng tries to pacify her. Let's not get worked up over that old furnace. Let's talk about how to squander wealth if one had ten heavenly tier furnace cauldrons. Luo Chenshua looks unamused. How to squander? Every time you ask about something, haven't you already acquired it? She then decides she doesn't want to deal with him anymore. She's already unhappy with his wasteful behavior, and now he wants her advice on how to be more wasteful. Absolutely not. Yi Feng pleads. Don't go, master. I'm still learning. Please offer some guidance. Luo Chenshua quickens her pace, mumbling, this is infuriating. Out of sight, out of mind. As she passes through the yard, old Xia is thoughtfully wiping and arranging the Nine Dragons Cauldron. Seeing Luo Chenshua walk by, old Xia asks if she's going out to purchase medicinal herbs. He reminds her that there's no need to buy any. They had already bought a large batch a few days ago, and it should be sufficient. Luo Chenshua says she'll get some spiritual ore instead. She just wants to get out and clear her mind. Old Xia says that for spiritual ore, she'll have to talk to Elder Chu. Luo Chenshua gets frustrated. Why are you being so nosy? Fine, I'll go out and buy some elixirs instead. Old Xia suddenly realizes that it seems Luo Chenshua is upset, probably because of Yi Feng again. He almost forgot that it's time for Yi Feng's regular squandering. Without giving any more attention to Luo Chenshua, Old Xia hurries toward Yi Feng's residence. Luo Chenshua feels vexed, wondering if everyone is deliberately making her life difficult. Upon arriving, Old Xia tells Yi Feng to wait. Why should a young man like you do such manual labor? Let me handle this. Seeing Old Xia's enthusiasm, Yi Feng is somewhat dumbfounded. Why aren't you using spiritual energy? Old Xia replies that using spiritual energy wouldn't make it manual labor. I need the exercise. Curious, Old Xia asks what Yi Feng is digging a hole for. Yi Feng asks him to come out and explains the purpose of the hole. He then takes out a heavenly tear furnace cauldron. Old Xia is incredulous. Is this a heavenly tear furnace cauldron? What are you planning to do with it? Feeling a bit guilty, Yi Feng says, I'm planning to use it as a toilet. That hole is essentially a latrine. The mental image of Yi Feng using a heavenly tear furnace cauldron as a toilet pops into Old Xia's mind. Unable
unable to contain himself. He feels utterly insulted as an alchemist. That's it. I can't take it anymore. I have to put an end to this. Furious at the prospect of Yi Feng using the heavenly tear furnace cauldron as a toilet, old Xia is about to take drastic measures. Just then, Luo Chinchua arrives in time to intervene. Elder Xia, please show some restraint. After all, he's my direct disciple. Old Xia is fuming. Sec master, don't stop me. I must put an end to this wastrel. He's insulting my profession. Yi Feng feels a sense of deja vu. It seems like whenever his beautiful master gets angry at him, it's old Xia who comes to the rescue. Now the tables have turned. Thinking it best to leave, Yi Feng decides to call over his junior disciple, Wu Feng. Luo Chinchua is even more speechless. Are you trying to enrage the only two alchemists we have to death? Old Xia laments. Look what he's become under your indulgence, sect master. Luo Chinchua retorts. I wonder who was the one trying to stop me yesterday. What goes around comes around. Ha. Huh. Old Xia is at a loss for words. No wonder you and Yi Feng became master and disciple. Both of you are so cunning. Soon, Len Wu Feng arrives. A cheerful old Xia can't help but smirk, thinking about how Wu Feng is going to react. Wu Feng, still unaware of the gravity of the situation, enthusiastically talks about helping his senior brother Yi Feng build a latrine. However, old Xia's hopes of enjoying a show are dashed when it turns out Wu Feng already knows that Yi Feng plans to use the heavenly tear furnace cauldron as a toilet. Old Xia is baffled. How did you know? Wu Feng smirks, because my senior brother just gave me a heavenly tear furnace cauldron to use as a water tank in the yard. Old Xia is disheartened. Like father, like son, you've picked up bad habits from Yi Feng too. This is driving me insane. Get lost, both of you. Although he verbally tells Len Wu Feng to leave, it's actually old Xia who departs in a state of dejection. What bothers him the most is that Yi Feng would give a heavenly tear furnace cauldron to Wu Feng, while he, a ninth grade alchemist, doesn't even have one. The emotional roller coaster was intense for old Xia. However, when he returns to his own yard, he sees Chu Hongshan exclaiming, Elder Xia, how do you have a heavenly tear furnace cauldron in your yard? Upon hearing this, old Xia runs over with joy and indeed finds a heavenly tear furnace cauldron standing there, accompanied by a note with the character 4 gift. It seems Yi Feng hadn't forgotten him after all. Old Xia is so touched that he's moved to tears. Chu Hongshan advises him to contain himself. Don't drown the furnace cauldron in your drool. Realizing his lapse, old Xia regains his composure. At this moment, Chu Hongshan expresses a desire to study the furnace cauldron. He had always wanted to craft a heavenly tear furnace cauldron, but all those he had seen before were already claimed. Old Xia readily agrees, sharing the same sentiment as Wu Feng. Take this thing. If you don't, I'll just use it as a water tank in my yard. Although confused by Elder Xia's sudden change in attitude, Chu Hongshan has no objections. He promptly moves the furnace cauldron to his yard for study. However, when he gets back, he is utterly baffled to find a whole row of heavenly tear furnace cauldrons lined up. What the hell am I supposed to research now? Chu Hongshan is at a loss, staring at the seven heavenly tear furnace cauldrons in front of him. When did heavenly tear furnace cauldrons become so common? Just then, Yi Feng appears, startling Chu Hongshan. What are you doing here? As a weapon and armor smith, you should know how to squander resources with a heavenly tear furnace cauldron, right? Chu Hongshan claims ignorance. I'm an old man. I don't understand your young people's wasteful habits, but I can craft weapons and armor. Upon hearing the words weapons and armor, Yi Feng's eyes light up. Ah, Elder Chu, you catch on quickly, Yi Feng says, encouraging Chu Hongshan to pick one. Chu Hongshan is puzzled. What's the use for a weapon smith like me? Are you suggesting I wield this furnace cauldron in battle? Yi Feng responds, exactly. This furnace cauldron can be used for both offense and defense. Isn't it the ultimate weapon? You can use it to smash someone and hide inside for protection. It's perfect. Chu Hongshan still has reservations, saying, but this is a heavenly tear furnace cauldron. No one would abuse it like this. Yi Feng then poses a question. If you, Elder Chu, were to go all out, how long would it take to destroy this furnace cauldron? After contemplating, Chu Hongshan replies, I wouldn't be able to, no matter how long I try. That's the point. Such an amazing furnace cauldron would be wasted if not used as a weapon. With that, he gathers up the remaining furnace cauldrons leaving one for Chu Hongshan. Chu Hongshan is dumbfounded. You're giving this to me? It's the first time I've experienced your extravagance. No wonder everyone is shocked by you. All right, then let's return Elder Xia's furnace cauldron to him. Meanwhile, inside the sect leader's grand hall, Luo Chinchua, Old Bai, and Luo Kai are present. Yi Feng says, I entrust these heavenly tear furnace cauldrons to you all. Each of you can take one and use it as a weapon. Luo Chinchua is puzzled. Where did you get so many heavenly tear furnace cauldrons? As for using them as weapons, Little Blood is the first to agree. For her, the furnace cauldron is a perfect fit. Luo Kai, a body cultivator, is a bit envious. The demon race really is powerful. This furnace cauldron seems like it was made for her. Yi Feng chimes in, Master, don't you think it's a great fit? Luo Chinchua doesn't object to the arrangement, but asks, What's the deal with giving one to the dog? Yi Feng explains, Of course, it's for the dog to use as a doghouse. Plus, once the dog gets stronger, it can carry the furnace cauldron in its mouth to help us in battle. The mental image of a six-pack ripped dog wielding a giant cauldron 
to defeat enemies makes Luo Chinchua inexplicably speechless. It's an argument she finds hard to counter. As for the remaining one, I'll keep it for myself. Later, I'll let old Xia and junior brother Wu Feng know so they can use them as weapons as well. That should complete our extravagant spending, right? Just then, a roar from outside interrupts them. It's from the people of Mirror Moon Manor. Zhang Shufeng shouts angrily, Star Soul Sect must hand over the murderer who killed my son. Or else, today, I will annihilate the Star Soul Sect entirely.